we get phone calls from time to time from people that are struggling with any irrigation problems. The majority of the problems that are occurring are around solenoid valves. We generally don't have too much, I mean, sometimes a sprinkler's not popping up, but if it's been designed properly and the water flow that we've been given is correct and they've put it in properly, it works. Solenoid valves are, are, are probably the only thing that, goes, that, that can really go wrong. Um, so I'm just going to put up a few different things and see if you can help me with that. So, my valve won't open. So we've just talked about that. Does anyone have an idea on why a 24 volt AC solenoid valve won't open? I'm not telling you either, you have to tell me. Power. Yep. So if there's no electricity going through the valve, it will not open. So, hi, my valve won't open. All right, cool. Have you checked that there's power running to the valve? Oh, I don't know how to do that. All right, so there's a few ways we can do that. You can do a, an ohms resistance test at the controller and see if the controller's working. You can go out there and actually unscrew the coil and listen to it while it's working. You can check, you can cut that coil off and wire another coil to the same cable and try to get, see if there's another coil working if that one's not. Um, generally, or you can check that the controller's still, that the controller's even turned on. Um, so there's a few things there. Um, you could take, check the wire joins. Like, so there's, there's a, the idea behind the troubleshooting side of this is it's, it's probably the most real life, like all the stuff that I've just taught you, you could probably have picked up over the years and you're just like, yeah, well, we know that. We put a system in. I didn't know about the dual check, but cool, we'll start doing it. This is what's the real stuff that's going to happen when you go out to site and it's 3.30 on a Friday afternoon and your boss or you are, or the client's just like, I need this fixed. Like, we're going away on the weekend and you're like, holy shit, I want to go home. It's the end of the week. What shall I do? So you want to work out the, the, the quickest solutions that are easiest first. So obviously from a power standpoint, the first thing is open the controller. Is it on, right? It could be simply that the client's turned it off. Every one of your clients will lie to you. It's guaranteed. They didn't touch the controller. They haven't been out there. I didn't. It's not turned off. Like, no, we didn't change our Wi-Fi password. I don't know what's wrong with it. Like, all of that shit happens all the time. So, is the controller turned on? You can check that straight away. It might be simply fixing that. If you've got the app, and you can, as a as a contractor, you can actually have a parent-child relationship with the app. So, you've got your Wi-Fi dongle plugged into the controller. You run all your clients all your clients' devices through your phone, and then they have child access, so they have to put a password in, and if they make an edit, it, you can track it and say, no, you changed it, because you put your pin in, I've seen that you've changed it. So you might be able to deal with that at this level without going out to site. Pro power, another interesting one is the, the valve might not have turned on in their opinion, because it wasn't meant to turn on. So yeah, it was power, but that's because the controller wasn't actually meant to send power out there, because it's Saturday and we note water on Saturdays. If you don't, if it's not that, then you might need to go out there. You need to check the integrity of the wire. So the quickest thing, the quickest way to test the controller is actually working, is you could go perform an ohms resistance test using a multimeter at the coil down the other end. So you test to see if there's power actually going through the controller before you start cutting cable. As soon as you start cutting cables, opening valve boxes, taking solenoid valves out, you're adding half an hour, an hour of your time. A lot of this stuff, all these basic tests, can be done really quickly, and you can be back in your car and going home. All right, so power, what else? What, my valve won't open. There's only really one other thing that the valve does other than power. Pressure. Yep. What's the pressure? Water. Water, right? So no pressure. So if there's not enough, these valves need enough pressure to pop. So the, the way that they open is the water pressure comes in the back and opens. Now, if you've got zero pressure, this could be your problem. The client didn't turn the bull valve off, or their kids didn't turn the bull valve off, right? So that's one thing. The valves could be around the wrong way. So if you put a valve in backwards, it won't open. And that's pressure again, or flow. Um, the flow control may have been turned down all the way, which is that on the top. I didn't talk about that before. Um, and they've, they've just crushed it to a point where the, the valves open, but there's no water flowing through, not enough for a sprinkler to pop up, so you don't know about it. What else with water? Um, or there's a blockage of some sort which has come through the water. So if uh, the, the, what is it, all water now, if they do a repair at, at the road, um, they get lots of rubble inside the mains pipe and then that flushes through your system and you get some rocks. Usually it's in the last valve here. 
they get in there and then there's, it's blocking the water from moving through, the valve won't open. Anyone else got any idea? Have I missed anything? Won't open? That's probably it. All right, so won't close. So the system's on. Why would it not close? Dirt. Dirt? Yep, so definitely debris. Now, with a solenoid valve, it's nothing much can go wrong with them, but they do have sensitive areas. So you could have a small amount of dirt in there or on the coil that stops the coil from actually simulate, like stopping from closing and dropping down and it just won't close. You could also have a rock inside the under the diaphragm that's stopping the diaphragm from closing. Ideally, you want to check that first, right? Because that's just screwing that off. You're not getting tools out of your car. You're not opening valves up. As soon as you take the top of this diaphragm off, you're a half an hour, right? So you're taking that off, you're taking that out and you're having a look. Now, that dirt may have created damage and it might have actually torn the diaphragm. That's a trip to an irrigation shop or hopefully you've got one of these on board. You can replace the diaphragm quite easily. All you're doing is screwing the, those eight screws out, taking this apart. Have you done this? Have you done like repairs? Yep. Anyone else? Yep. Yep. I'm wasting my time. Oh, here you go. Here we go. So you basically undo these, take that off. That's the base of a solenoid valve. The good thing about solenoid valves that are in the ground is the bit that's in the ground doesn't change, right? So there's nothing, there, this is a solid piece of plastic with no moving parts. So provided that the manufacturer still makes that valve, in most cases you could go buy the valve, take that bit from a new valve and screw it onto the old bit of the old valve. Unless this has been melted or warped or driven over by an excavator, you're pretty good. You're gonna put that back on and you're gonna be fine. So um, these as well, like, I think the key is knowing about it, but not necessarily needing to know how to do it. So this would be on YouTube, how to replace a diaphragm on a Rainbird DVF. And there'd be a two minute video of someone just unscrewing it, and then you can watch it and go, oh no shit, okay, I just gotta make sure that's that way, and that I don't lose that spring, and that I put the screws back in that pattern, and then I tighten them up this way, and then I test it that way. So it's a pretty easy fix, and none of this is that hard. It's just if you can't troubleshoot down to what it is, you're not going to be able to fix it. So, won't close anything else that would stop a valve from closing in anyone's minds. This is a bit harder. So obviously, we've done debris. We talked up here about water. The valves have to have water actively flowing through them to close. So if there's not enough flow or pressure, they won't close. If there's a rock or something stuck in there stopping it from closing, it won't close. And then the power. It might, it might be on, on purpose. The client might have rang you and said that it's watering because there's water everywhere because everyone's dramatic and it's just because it's Monday morning and it's when it's meant to water. So that would be something to check. Um, I should have a cheat sheet for this because I don't remember them all. That's probably it. So a valve not closing is probably more common than a valve not opening. You're not going to get phone calls from clients for the valve not opening until the garden's dead. Valve not closing, the garden's flooding and there's water everywhere. So ideally that's just, hey client, please turn bull valve off. You know where it is, it's in the green box next to the tree. They turn it off and then you can go deal with it later. Um, valve not opening, obviously, it depends on how hot it is. It's probably 42 that day. So it's time to go see your client. Um, what else could there be? There's a, there's a bleed screw here. That screw there. They use that to bleed water out the top of here. So that screw there. When you unscrew that screw, water squirts out. That'll turn the valve on. So you can actually turn a solenoid valve on manually by turning the coil a quarter turn and it simulates the electrical lift of the pin. Taking that bleed screw out will do the same thing. If the bleed screw is not in properly or you've lost it or you've threaded it or whatever, it'll think that it's still open and it will just keep running. So it could be that that bleed screw has been taken. That's a, that's a very, like a child has been in a valve box and started unscrewing things and that could be the problem. So that's probably it. The valves are around the right way. They're wired up properly. There's no debris in them um, and they've got enough flow. They should be fine.